And Allah will give it the power to speak and it will go around the world speaking to people. And it will be a sign from Allah. And, and people, ulama, Muslims worldwide for 13 centuries have acknowledged them to be in that manner. They will be, when the ummah will be in a desperate situation, Allah will raise initially Mahdi. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لَوْ لَمْ يَبْقَى مِنَ الدَّهْرِ إِلَّا يَوْمٌ If the nothing remains but one day in the time from the survival of this world, the world will not end. لَا تَذْحَبُ الدُّنْيَا حَتَّى يَبْعَثَ اللَّهُ حَتَّى يَبْعَثُ فِي أُمَّتِي رَجُلٌ مِّنْ أَهْلِ بَيْتِي يُوَاتِ إِسْمُهُ إِسْمِي وَيُوَاتِ إِسْمُ أَبِيهِ إِسْمُ أَبِي There will be a man, he will be the, the ruler of the Arabs حَتَّى يَمْلِكُ الْعَرَبَ a ruler amongst the Arabs whose name will be the same as my name, whose father's name will be the same as my father's name. And يَمْلَأُوا الْأَرْضَ قِسْتًا وَعَدْلًا كَمَا مُلِيَتْ ظُلْمًا وَجَوْرًا He will fill the world with justice as the world would have been filled with tyranny and oppression. And his name will be the same as my name, his father's name will be the same as my father's name. And he has also been referred to as the Mahdi or in some circles as Imam Mahdi. He will be from the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And not just from the family of Rasulullah, he will be from the descendants of Imam Hassan radiallahu anhu. Because the family of Rasulullah spread from two lines, from Hassan and from Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhumah. And, but Imam Mahdi, he will be from the descendants of Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And then in his time, وَتَنَعَمُ أُمَّتِي نِعْمَةً لَمْ يَنَعَمُوا قَدْ It says in one hadith, my ummah will enjoy so much prosperity, the ummah would have never known so much for prosperity in their entire history. In that time there will be such a rain. The earth will not leave anything from its produce which it doesn't produce. And there will be so much prosperity in its time. The jar will come. And Isa alayhi salatu wasalam will kill him, will kill him. He will come down and descend in order specially initially to kill the Jal in a place called Bab al which is near Tel Aviv. And Isa alayhi salam will kill him. And then Islam will prevail all over the world. And لِيُذْهِرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّهِ And Islam and this prophecy, this command of Allah that Islam will prevail over all our all adiyan will come true in the time of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam when وَإِمْ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ إِلَّا لَيُؤْمِنَ النَّبِهِ قَبْلَ مَوْتِهِ When all the people of the book will become believers at his hands before he dies. Then after, after killing the Jal at Bab al then Yajuj Majuj will appear and Isa alayhi salam will even, he will not be able to fight them. He will take the believers to Mount Sinai and pray to Allah and Allah will get rid of them. And then Yajuj Majuj will die and afterwards then Dabbatul Ard will appear. And this is exactly how the Ummah has been believing this to be. Has anybody heard any other interpretation? Except Qadianis. Qadiani says, no, the Isa ibn Maryam which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa spoke about is Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, the son of Chirag Bibi. The Prophet said he will come in Damishq and he was born in Qadian. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, the Jal will appear. He said that the Jal are the Christian priests. And these Yajuj Majuj are the Europeans and the Russians. <laughs> I didn't bring the books today because I didn't think I'll be speaking about this. Uh, he said, and, and if anybody, inshallah, what I'll do is on Sunday there is a conference I will present them with the, the references there. He says, Yajuj Majuj are the Europeans and the Russians and the Dabatul Ard are the Ulama. <laughs> Dabatul are the ulama who speak about Allah, to kallimuhum. Na'udhu billah. And he said, I am the Masih. I am the Masih. And he said, you will, you will kill the Jal. The Prophet Wasallam said, you will kill, uh, that Isa ibn Maryam will kill the Jal in Lud. He said, no, what the Prophet really meant was, 
that uh, Ludhiana, Ludhiana in Punjab, and he said, spoken so many lies and he given so many false interpretations which the Ummah had never ever heard about in 13 centuries of Islam. And inshallah, this coming Sunday, and this coming Sunday, uh, there is a special conference being, being arranged and organized uh, in Puting Islamic Center at 6 o'clock from Asr al Isha Salat, inshallah, in which many of such uh, issues will be discussed. And inshallah, all the brothers are requested to attend because there are, unfortunately and sadly, Amari Bad Kismati, our ill fortune, <coughs> that in South London especially, there are many, many Qadianis. They like calling themselves Ahmadis, but they are not Ahmadis, they are Qadianis. Ahmadis, they try to relate themselves to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the name Ahmad. In reality, they relate themselves to Ahmad, Ghulam Ahmad, but they say we are all Ahmadi Muslim. But they are not Ahmadi Muslim, they are Qadiani Kafirs. And uh, in South London, especially Tooting, Norbury, Croydon, Wimbledon, in these places, there are so many Qadianis, thousands. And they were initially scattered all over Europe, but recently they've been given the orders and permission to gather in London. And South London especially because they have their big international center in Morden. And if anybody goes to Morden, there's a big mosque on the 8th, well not a mosque, Mizara. It's a temple of the Qadiani. It's, it's, it's unlawful to call their, uh, their, their place of worship as a masjid. Many Muslims out of innocent go there to worship. But if you, if you pray with them, it's like praying with kafirs, and if you pray behind them, your prayer is simply not valid. Because if you pray behind them, it's like praying behind a kafir. So people should totally reframe. There is another small masjid in the modern, if you need to go, you can go there. But the big one on the A24, it's a very big complex. That is not a masjid, that is a temple of Qadianis, and they gather there, and from there, they propagate their kufr. And so in this area was special in South London, there are so many Qadianis, they appear to look like us, and they are not just Pakistanis and Indians, there are Arabs Qadiani as well, especially Palestinians, and recently, re recently in Palestine they had one of their annual meetings in which thousands of Palestinian Qadianis also took part. In West Africa, Qadianis have uh, spread out extensively, they've established a network in East Africa, they have their network in many poor countries. They present themselves like Muslims. They build schools, they build hospitals, and people think uh, that they are Muslims as well. Until so slowly, gradually, eventually, they inject their poison and cause this cancer to grow and develop amongst Muslims, whereby Muslims, the innocent ones, and they get taken up by them, and their iman is taken away, and they become kafir. And because in the West, particularly. <coughs> Particularly, the Qadianis enjoy special privileges. And one of the things is that if any person declares himself a Qadiani, he's guaranteed asylum. Your asylum is guaranteed. Mm -hmm. And the Qadianis will even give you a woman to marry. So people, out of the love of dunya, and this is what the Prophet wasallam said, there will come a time when a man will give up his faith, his iman, for a meager worldly gain. And they help you to gain, to succeed in your asylum application. They help you settle down and to get you accommodation and a woman as well and so on and so forth. And anybody, anybody who makes intention that not now, six months time, three months time, I will also become a Qadiani or any, anybody else, a Christian or a Shia or whatever, for whatever reason, Ulama have stated, if a person makes intention even, that after three months, one month, one year, I will become this person. I will become a Qadiani or a Christian or a Jew or whatever, or a Qadiani or a Shia. Then he doesn't have to wait for a year. That same very moment he will become a Qadiani. If a person makes intention, after six months I will become a Qadiani or a Christian or whatever, then ulama have stated, because that very moment he is, he is expressing doubt in his faith. He's, he's, although he's declaring now that Islam is not really true and Islam is not the real faith, hence that person loses his iman at the very moment even upon which he makes intention. And all his prayers, all his sadaqah, his hajj, everything he's ever done is finished. لا 
فإن أشركت لا يحبط لنا عملك ولا تكون لنا من الخاسرين. And when if once a person has become a murtad, murtad, very very often, hardly ever, does Allah give such a person to then repent. إن الذين كفروا بعد إيمانهم ثم ازدادوا كفرا لن تقبل توبتهم. If a person becomes a kafir after becoming a Muslim, Allah will never accept his tawbah. Allah will never accept his tawbah. And ulama have explained this means Allah will not even give him the tawfiq to repent. And this person will continue until the time he will die in kufr. He might enjoy a good, a good life here. Or he might appear to enjoy a good life, but he will never have peace on the heart. And then that person will die like a kafir. And then we is doomed to Jahannam for eternity. So this is Allah, what Allah says, imanakum, Protect your iman. We need to pray five times a day. But if a person doesn't, for whatever reason, is sinful, it's not good. But believe you me, there is hope. There is hope. We are bad Muslims. Even me, we are all sinful and bad. But as long as we are loyal to Allah and His Rasul, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there is hope Allah will forgive us. There is hope Allah will forgive us and there is hope the beloved Prophet of Allah will make shafa'a for us on the day of Qiyam. But if a person turns his back to Rasulullah and a person turns his back to Rasulullah and runs after a madman like this clown of Qadian, then there is no hope whatsoever for this person and he is doomed to Jahannam for eternity.